Okay, now that we know the basics of how to do, uh, you know, some of the icons and uh, do RoboLab here, so I'm going to move into Inventor 1 to show you some of the Inventor environments. Now, I did double-click right there to, to launch that, and that this looks substantially different. You can minimize the, uh, the console, as we call it, with this black bar in there. We can get rid of that here. We can click the green button to make this bigger, okay? And uh, if you can see, my icon here is kind of this 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 hand with the finger pointing, but that actually it doesn't really do anything for us. I can't do anything with that. So I'm going to go um, here into the window and show tools palette, and I'm going to get the tools. And there's there's two tools really that you're going to use. You're going to use the position size select tool. We'll just call it the select tool. You're going to use that tool, okay, and it gives us the crosshairs. And with this tool, I can sele select something. I can pick it up and move it, okay. I can also uh, select something and delete it if I wanted to, okay. The other tool you're going to use is what we call the connect wire. It looks like this spool of wire. And if I um, delete something, okay, let's say I delete that wire. Now I'm going to um, switch to the wire tool. And I'm going to wire this back in. I'll talk more about wiring in a second. But I don't need this tool palette. I can, if, I, if I've got this hand right here, all I need to remember is spacebar. Can you remember spacebar? Save that. Because spacebar is our friend. All we need to do is hit the spacebar, and it's going to switch to our select tool. And if I press spacebar again, it's going to give me the wire tool. Spacebar again goes back to select. So the spacebar is all you really need to remember for the tools to just get off that hand in the beginning, and then we can switch between the select tool and the wire tool after that. And I can click on something, you know, and, and bring it back in, and I'm just switching between the, uh, the, the wire and the select tool. Also, to delete something, I select it, and I can hit delete. Delete and backspace on a Mac keyboard is the same. Um, and so I can just, yeah. Okay. Um, let's look at the, f the functions palette now. Here I've got, um, we would call everything we put into a program functions, and um, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff here. These are, this is still a very limited set of functions that we can do, but I can reproduce this. I, um, in order to get this program in here, I can, I can drag and drop. I can click and hold and then let go. I can also click and let go and then click and let go. Okay. Um, something about the functions palette you might be interested in. If I, if I somehow close that, I can always right click and get the functions palette. I can select the thing I want and then click and let go. And did you also notice how I put my icon near another one? It automatically connected. It will connect for you like that. But understand that this is one little wire segment. This is another little wire segment. That's a separate wire segment. It might look like it's one long wire, but it is not. It's they're separate. They're, they're a bunch of different wires there. Okay. And you can let it let it auto connect for you if you want to. If you just hold the icon in place near the next one, it will. If I hold still in a certain distance, it will connect for you. However, this uh, might get you in trouble. If you start putting programming together and you start stringing the icons together, but you put them together in the wrong order, you'd have to go back in and delete these out before you um, change the order. And so you might want to not uh, let it automatically connect for you and then make sure you get everything in the right order and it looks right to you and then go through and connect all the wires. Um, let's see, we're going to get one more in here. Okay, so the functions. Let's talk about this. So say you accidentally close the functions window. You can right-click to get it, but if you want to keep it on the screen, I can hover over the little tack right there. And once that tack goes in the hole, if I, if I click on that, it sticks. It stays. It pins it in there. And so now I can grab. All right. And I'm not going to bother with the stop, the ABC stop. You won't need that for your program. It's good for some certain instances, but you don't need to. Let's talk about um, um, connecting the wires. I've got my wire right here. I'm going to hit spacebar to get my wire. I'm going to connect to the end of this light on port C to the beginning of the touch sensor on port 1. Boom. And then I go from the end of touch sensor on port 1 to the end of my program. Okay, it's begin to end, begin or end to begin, boom, and then boom. If you goof up the wiring, if you do something weird, yeah, it's going to go black and white, and then I have to delete things out. 
Okay, but also I want you to see something here. If you goof up the wiring, it's possible to goof up the wiring, so we have this little connection right back there. You can see that highlighted wire behind there, and it's going to goof you up. So if that happens, and you know it's going to happen because no matter what you do, you think you get it connected correctly, and it simply won't work. You can't, re you can't reuse that. So in that case, what we have to do is get rid of this and get a new one in there. Okay. Um, let's say this is the program I want to upload. I used to have a big white arrow to tell it to upload. Where's my upload? You see it on the screen? You see it's in the window. It's right up here. Okay, well, that's our arrow now. And we can click on that to upload. I'm not going to worry. This, you guys know what this is going to do. These these are going to run until I touch the touch sensor, so I'm not going to bother with the RCX at this point. But I do want you to notice what happens here with this window. If I delete something, watch what happens to the white arrow. If I break my program, the white arrow turns into a broken arrow. But it's still an active button, and it's going to give me errors. It's going to help me correct errors. And if I double click on one of these, it highlights something that's wrong. If I double click on another one, it highlighting out something else that's wrong. So it's going to give you a little bit of help. It will catch some errors like the wiring. It won't catch all errors though. There, there might be problems with your program otherwise that it won't know to catch or, or fix. Here is a problem we sometimes run into. Okay, I've got what looks like a complete program but the arrow is still broken. I double click and I still have nothing. So you gotta watch out for stray functions sitting there that aren't wired that are maybe behind your window. We get that sometimes. And so I can just delete that and now my program is ready to go again. Um, on the Mac, and you guys, um, if you're you know logging into PCs elsewhere in the building, you know that when you log into a PC in um, the media center or one of the computer labs, you get your documents. But here, you are saving to the local hard drive, and so that means you have to use the same computer each day. Um, so when you save, you're going to be saving. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And it's going to be in level 1. For you guys, it should say level 2. And if I save this, okay, it's, it's, we have two things here, what we're calling the file and where we're saving it. And level 1 is fine, and you'll see where this is saved in a minute. And I'm going to hit save. You should save just after you get started. And you want to save you know, a few times a day. After you do a lot of work, you want to save because you don't want to lose any of your work. Sometimes, um, you know, especially at the end of the hour, we want to make sure you're saving and getting out of the software. If you don't, um, you might lose your changes. Someone else might come along. Uh, someone else in the uh, next class period might close out this piece of software so they can use the web or a different piece of software, and they might not necessarily know to save your program for you. So you want to make sure you're saving and quitting out of RoboLab, you know, at the end of the hour. I'm going to close this file.